The Kia Telluride is advertised as a go anywhere family vehicle. Well, can it really go anywhere? We find out on this episode of Driving Sports TV. The 2020 Telluride is Kia's newest option for families that want a feature-rich three-row crossover. Prior to the Telluride, Kia relied on its Sorento to cater to larger families. However, in that vehicle, the third row was simply too small for anything other than the tiniest of children. With this new crossover, Kia is going bigger and better with the hope that it can carve out a large piece of the midsize pie. All trim levels come with a standard 3.8 liter V6 with direct injection. This engine produces a peak 291 horsepower, which is par for the class. It's connected to an eight-speed automatic transmission. In our test car, it also came with Kia's new active on-demand all-wheel drive, which is a $2,000 option on all trims. EPA rates this setup at 19 in the city and 24 miles to the gallon on the highway. If you need to tow, a package is available to handle up to 5,000 pounds. However, our test vehicle did not include it. You can get into a Telluride starting at around $32,000, which isn't bad. The model we're testing today is the top of the line SX. This is $46,860, including all options and destination fees. You can open the back simply by approaching a locked vehicle with the key in your pocket. No hands or foot waving necessary. With all three rows in use, you're looking at 21 cubic feet of capacity. Fold down all the seats for a maximum of 87 cubic feet, which is slightly more than both the Honda Pilot and the Toyota Highlander. It's even a half a foot more than the new Subaru Ascent. With the seats up, the third row is quite comfortable for a full-size adult. I even had some extra leg room. When does that happen in a three row? When equipped with captain's chairs, the second row is near deluxe accommodations. Passengers get an AC power socket as well as USB placed conveniently in the seat backs. Privacy screens are a nice bonus. Second row aircon is controlled from roof mounted buttons. Up front is a cabin that will make every other midsize crossover jealous. Metal, leather, and a really nice fake wood to create a warm and inviting place. There are some piano black plastics in high use areas, but thankfully their application is limited. The SX trim includes an exclusive 12 way adjustable driver's seat with memory, heating, and ventilation. Gauges include a small screen flanked by a set of analog dials. The center console features a large 10.3 inch touchscreen system that is loaded with all the greatest hits, including maps, XM satellite radio, weather, and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto through USB. It's modern, responsive, and easy to use. Switch into reverse for a full surround view with backup camera. Additional safety equipment includes rear cross traffic alerts, blind spot warning, forward collision avoidance, adaptive cruise control with lane keep, and driving assist. Many of these features can also be deactivated if you prefer not to use them. Driving modes are becoming standard across the class, and the Telluride has a bunch of them. The central controller lets drivers switch between comfort, eco, sport, smart, and snow modes on the fly. These settings change throttle mapping, gear holds, and all-wheel drive power distribution. Let's see if we can get this power to kick up some gravel. For this test, we'll set the drive mode to sport, lock the power split to send the maximum 50% of torque to the back, and we'll also disable traction control. Not bad, a little spin on the front, a smidge of movement in the back. We'll get more into the all wheel drive system later in this review as we head to the mountains. But first, let's take a closer look at some of the more everyday features on this rig. Considering its size, the Telluride actually handles pretty good. This is thanks in part to multi-link rear suspension in the back and brake vectoring up front. What the system does is it adds an imperceivable amount of brake to the front and side wheel as the vehicle corners. This helps rotate the vehicle. This tech isn't unique to Kia, but it works very well here and I'm really glad they added it to the Telluride. This does, of course, have all of the advanced safety stuff that you would expect in a family crossover these days, including adaptive cruise control. All I have to do is hit cruise, 
hit set, and bam, I am now auto driving essentially. It'll even steer. Tap it in, tap it in, see? Oh, hands on steering wheel again. It does a pretty good job of uh, maintaining my lane. Uh, there is a little bit of ping-ponging going on here and it doesn't let me do it for very long but the feature is there and again as I always stress it's not really about automatic driving it's about reducing fatigue on long distances uh, by eliminating the need to do micro adjustments all the time Now it's interesting, the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle, it is very similar to what is in the Kia Sorento. However, whereas the Sorento has an all-wheel drive system provided by Magna Powertrain, this one was developed in-house at Kia. However, on paper, it looks very similar. The biggest difference being this little controller down here, which lets me uh, basically set all-wheel drive parameters with the flick of a dial. I can go everything from Eco, which is essentially 100% power to the front, uh, to Sport, which puts up to 45% of the power to the back. And all the other settings are other variations thereof. Or I can just override all of those and just hit the lock button, which will lock this to a 50-50 split front to back. Now, Kia's marketing department, God bless them, they get a little excited when they market this vehicle. An on-demand all-wheel drive system with center locking differential. And we make incredible things. What? Kia has thrown down the gauntlet. Sliding in mud, crossing rivers, wow. The 2020 Kia Telluride has put hardcore off-roading SUVs on notice. Those dinosaurs days are numbered. Well, maybe not. Let's toss out all the hyperbole and look exactly what this all-wheel drive system is capable of, advertising aside with center locking differential. That locking center differential that they tout in the ads? Yeah, it really just locks the rear power transfer clutch. It's not a locking differential like you would find in a Mercedes G-Wagon or a Jeep Gladiator. Unlike a locking differential, the center clutch will release if overworked. It doesn't guarantee a constant 50-50 all the time, especially under stress. And that's the important point. Further, to transfer power left to right, the Telluride uses individual brakes to redistribute torque from a spinning wheel to one with grip. This is commonly known as an E-differential, and it's not bad. It's a less expensive option to a locking or limited slip differential. Using electronics to emulate a differential does have its limitations, however, which you will see once the Telluride faces off against the rock trail. Before we get it dirty, let's just see how the Telluride handles something a bit more common, a zero to 60 run. Now it is wet and the road is mostly level. Let's go ahead and try a zero to 60. I will go ahead and put this into sport mode um, and there's really nothing else to do. Keep this in just regular drive and three, two, one, go. Oh, that V6 trying to get up to speed. Oh, that shift was a little hard and 50 and 60. That first shift was a little on the abrupt side. Now, it is interesting this uses an eight-speed automatic transmission when so many others are going to CVTs. Um, hopefully, this transmission will assist us when we need to be crawling up the rock trail. So, keep an eye on that. Traction control allows me to get a little bit of slip into it. Yeah, as is typical in a family three row, the suspension is on the stiff side. Going up to this really dark passage here. Ugh. We just had a storm move through last night, so hopefully all the roads are open. Whoa, hey, get a little sideways there. Ah, I didn't even disable traction control. 
The gauge cluster is showing me that power is going to all four wheels exactly evenly. So that is kind of nice uh, to see on the gauge happening what the button says is supposed to be happening. V6 is really nice. It puts out 291 horsepower, uh, and it's pretty brisk. Although I like a little more low-end torque. It seems like it's a little, that was a bigger rock than I thought. Uh, it seems it's a little on the laggy side. The Telluride does have eight inches of ground clearance. However, and it's a big however, the approach and departure angles on this are not that great. It has a lot of overhang on the front, it has a lot of overhang on the back. Because of that, I am not going to take it on anything more advanced than this trail. And this trail might actually be a little much for it. Um, because like when I took the Honda Passport, when I took it down the opposite side of the crosscut climb, it hit its nose a little bit. And it was fine, but any more overhang on the front and it's just gonna rip that thing off. And the Telluride, I can tell just by looking at it, it's not gonna work. Uh, so we're really just here to test the all-wheel drive capability, not to damage the vehicle. So let's do that. So right now I am actually using the front camera, which is kind of a cool little feature. Um, so I can look at obstacles. Sure, why not? Now there's a branch hanging down, but I can easily go around that. Now, there's no other real features to do here other than putting the vehicle into all-wheel drive lock. Maybe take a little momentum here. You know, the crawl ratio is actually pretty good on this. I feel like I can get a, a nice, easy, slow movement up the path. And so far, no issues. We haven't really hit the hard stuff yet. Those are right ahead. Oof, those stumps always look mean. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm, I wonder what this looks like on the outside. It sure isn't doing anything in here. Ah, oh, it's slippery wet rocks. Huh. Boy, that's funny. I would think from the Telluride advertising that I could get through anything. So I gotta go around that one. Modified line. Come on, you can do this. Oh, there we go. Oh. Revenge of the 20 inch wheels. Up. Come on, come on, come on. Now it's supposed to uh, apply brakes to the wheel that's spinning so it can then send power to the opposite wheel. I'm not really sure that's what I'm getting here. There's no indication on the display to show me what's happening. So I'm gonna stop up here and I'm gonna see exactly what my clearance is going to look like here because uh, spotting is very important when off-roading. Okay. So I have this much room. Nope, Matt, mark that. I have this much room. So I need to actually go over to the this side a little bit more so I can clear that obstacle better. Okay, and it made it to the top. Oh, come on, almost made it to the top. <laughs> okay, so we made it to the top in the 2020 Telluride. 
Um, I will say that the marketing was a little over the top. This thing has no more capability than any other of these vehicles in this class. And in fact, the Honda Pilot has a much better all-wheel drive system if you're gonna compare it. I mean, this is basically the same size as a Honda Pilot. Now, with the Pilot, you're giving up the interior because this is honestly a much nicer interior. But in terms of all-wheel drive capability, since the Pilot has a real torque vectoring system with the IBTM4 setup, it is just way more capable off-road. This one, it's fine. It's about on par, I'd say, with the Toyota Highlander. And that's not a bad thing. The Highlander was very impressive. There is no hill descent control on this vehicle, so I have to do it with my brake pedal which shouldn't be too bad. I just gotta be really careful to not get overly excited. Oof, come on, you got this. Yeah. I would say the surround view cameras are actually really helpful here. It's helping me see rocks that are right under the front of the car. That's kinda neat. The 2020 Kia Telluride is a really nice family crossover. Fact is, most owners will never encounter a challenge like this. But it's important to understand what are the limits. And I think today, we found them. Fording rivers? Yeah, the Telluride would not be my first choice. That said, if you are more adventurous than your neighbors and you do need something a bit more capable, you might wanna just jump up to like a Toyota Sequoia or reconsider if you really need that third row. If two rows will do, the Honda Passport and the Toyota 4Runner are solid options with certified off-road chops. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. I'll see you next week. I think I'm reviewing the new Lexus LS500, which should be fun. Be sure to leave a comment. Also, give us a thumbs up. Share our videos. We make them for you, and we need your subscriptions. So please, subscribe. We'll see you next time.